Hello, my friends. This is Brother Des coming to you today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. From the prophetic Bible teachings for Sunday, October the 8th, 2023. In our last teaching, we covered the vision of that little horn in Tychus Epiphanes, that historical figure who emerged from among the four, one of the four generals of Alexander the Great that ruled the greco macedonian Empire, Daniel 9 through 14 of chapter 8. Today we will continue with the prophetic teachings in Daniel chapter 8. And this is about the appearance of Gabriel, the messenger of God. Daniel 8, 15 to 26. So in our teaching today, we will discuss how Daniel was overwhelmed with the vision that God had shared with him about Antiochus Epiphanes and all of the horrible things done to the temple and the people. And he wanted to know what it was all about. So God sent a man, as Daniel stated, by the river Uli, and the man turned out to be God's messenger, the angel Gabriel. Gabriel then explained to Daniel what he had seen in the first section of the chapter 8, 1 through 14, as we look at 15 through 28 of chapter 8 in its explanation. So in verse 29, Daniel gives a reaction to the explanation of the prophecy. We will then consider the conclusion of the matter and we'll give some lessons. So let's study. The overwhelmed Daniel. The Bible tells us, and it came to pass when I, I, even Daniel, had seen the vision and sought the meaning. Behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Daniel was puzzled. He desired to learn more about this vision. So in the midst of his confused state, the appearance of a man stood in front of Daniel. So here we find now, God sent Gabriel to the river Uli, where Daniel received the vision. Verse 16, And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Let us now break down this verse. Notice, Daniel said that he heard a man's voice between the banks who called and said to Gabriel, make this man, Daniel, to understand the vision. The voice that was, that was of Almighty God who spoke to Gabriel with a man's voice, remember, there were times when God spoke and it sounded like thunder so God could change his speech and how he wants to present himself. His voice was so frightful that the people in the wilderness told Moses, don't let God speak anymore. God called out to the personality at the river Uli. Daniel said it looked like a man, but we find it was Daniel. It was a... Uh, to Daniel, it looked like a man, but as God is concerned, it was God's messenger, Gabriel. This is the first time that Gabriel is introduced in the Bible, right here in Daniel chapter 8. God's command to Gabriel, make this man, Daniel, to understand the vision. Make it clear to Daniel that the explanation that Antiochus Epiphanes is a miniature picture of the coming Antichrist. So look at Gabriel's encounter with Daniel in verse 17. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid and I fell on my face. But he said to me, understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Did you get it? When the vision was going to be? Not in the many years that people predicted. But at the time of the end shall be the vision. 
Daniel was tremendously terrified when Gabriel came near him. In fact, Daniel fell on his face. But still he could understand a little bit what Gabriel was saying. And note, to this divine experience, so many of us, we would love to have heavenly beings give us a visit and touch us on the shoulder or whatever and say, this is it. However, it may not be as we humans may expect. It could be a terrifying experience. This is why Jesus Christ spoke to his disciples. In this manner, in John 13, 33, little children, yet a little while I'm with you, you shall seek me. And as I said unto you, the Jews, will I go, you cannot come. So now I say unto you, same thing, you cannot come. Now, notice John 7, 34, you shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither, you cannot come. Not now. John 7, 36. What man of saying is that? And he said, you shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither, you cannot come. John 14, 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Woo. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. This is why the Bible tells us in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This is why the trumpet shall sound. And in a moment, we find we shall be changed. This mortal must turn into immortality. This corruption must put on in corruption. Wow! That's why we have to be changed to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Even with Moses, God put his hand over his face so Moses couldn't see him. Even though much of the history with Antiochus Epiphanes and the Jewish people occurred when Gabriel was telling, De uh, telling Daniel about this, it was more than the Jewish people that were undergoing at that time. Antiochus was only a picture of the coming Antichrist who would come, note, at the time of the end, as Jesus Christ predicted in Matthew 24 of the coming great tribulation about the time of the end, a particular time dealing with the Jews and their persecution by the Antichrist during the great tribulation. He says, you shall endure unto the end, shall be saved. But the gospel must be preached throughout the place. But then you're going to see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. Then they were flee to the mountains, let him that on the housetop, uh, you know, not come down, neither let him turn back for something. Woe unto them that give suck in those days. And he said, except for the, 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 the days be shortened, no flesh shall be saved. And friends, he says, many will say, dearest Christ, he's out here. He said, believe it not, believe it not. When they say he's out in the secret chamber, he's out in the desert, he say, let me tell you something. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever a carcass is, there will the eagle be yet. Immediately after the great tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give a light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels. Oh, hallelujah. This prophecy goes beyond the immediate future of the projected time into the distant future. As we mentioned, Antiochus was just a picture 
of the coming Antichrist or that little horn in Daniel 7 who would emerge out of the fragmented Roman Empire. And so we find another point here. Daniel fell on his face and Gabriel showed up. But then a third major point here is Gabriel aroused Daniel out of his sleep. Now as he was speaking to me, Daniel said, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground, and he touched me, and he set me upright. Notice Daniel's reaction. He was not only, he not only fell on his face, but he fell into a deep sleep. Gabriel awoke him by touching him, and he set him upright. This verse shows the physical effect of the vision upon Daniel. As I was saying, a lot of us would like to see visions. And we'd like to see some being coming out of heaven and touch us and say, hey. But the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about love. Then that which is perfect is come. All these things shall be done away with. What are we talking about? When God's word is complete, we have it today, the Bible. When that is complete, all these things will be done away with. May God bless us. Gabriel revealed the meaning of the vision. And the Jewish people, the gent and, and the Gentiles with God's program, as it relates, note, to the time of the end. Not the end of time. To the time of the end, a period where God will bring things together and fix it his way. And he said, Behold, I make thee to know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. Gabriel told Daniel the story of God's program from Antiochus Epiphanes to the end of times of the Gentiles. The end of the indignation against the Jewish people. So Gabriel reveals now the overall interpretation as it relates to the time of the end. In verse 20 through 26. Verse 20, as we already know, but it proves what we were saying. The ram with the two horns, media Persia. Verse 21, the rough goat was the king of Greece. Alexander the Great was the horn between the eyes. Verse 22, after Alexander died, four kings will take his place. Those were his generals. And we find that from these four kings, they wouldn't be as powerful. But reveal after them, in verse 23, that this little king will come forth and he will transgress a lot of the things. History shows that Antiochus Epiphanes from the line of the Seleucian rulers that took Syria. It is believed that this man was demon-possessed. However, Jesus Christ predicted, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, inasmuch that, if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Matthew 24, 24. Verse 24 reveals that this little horn will be mighty under the power of Satan. He will destroy prosper practice and destroy the holy people, the Jewish remnant, if he could. And in verse 25, Daniel showed, was shown by the angel Gabriel that Antiochus Epiphanes was only a picture of the Antichrist. Or a picture of Daniel's little horn in chapter 7. I'll repeat. Note, because of his craft, caused things to prosper in his hand. And we'll see such things happening in Revelation about the Antichrist. Revelation 13, 17 states how his craft will prosper. Revelation 13, 5, people will magnify him in their hearts. And we find that in Revelation 6, the peace he will come in with, he will come in as a lamb, but he goes out as a lion. 
We find in Revelation 6, he's seen as that red horse coming with war, a false peace. And we find that he will stand against the prince of princes. That's what the Antichrist will do as we see in Revelation 13. And in verse 26 of Daniel 8, it reveals that these visions are true. However, Daniel was told, shut up the vision. In other words, there is not for your time, Daniel. It is for, or it shall be, for many days. The focus refers to the times of the end. Notice the effect of this vision on the prophet Daniel. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterwards, I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. <laughs> That's amazing. Verse 27 implies that the vision and the expectation from Gabriel caused Daniel to faint. He became sick for days. Afterwards, he then rose up and did the king's business. He remained astonished at the vision, and he also said he didn't think anybody could understand it. In other words, his physical and psychological physical and phys physical and psychological effects of this vision was devastating upon Daniel. As I look at the conclusions of this, what is strange here, the vision was not understood by Daniel. Yet many others, and even when Gabriel ex tried to explain it to him, he didn't fully understand. Yet there are many others over the years produced false teachings about this scripture. However, at the time of Daniel, God was showing how the program with Israel and that of the Gentiles in the world are connected. But today, from among the Gentiles, God is calling out. How beautiful that is. God is calling out a people for his name's sake, his church, the called out assembly of believers. See, God still giving the Gentiles a chance. When God completes this process, he will remove his church by the rapture. He will then turn to Israel and the remaining Gentiles there during the Great Tribulation, which will end with the battle of that great day of God Almighty at Armageddon. So the lessons for us today, the day of God's judgment is coming. Therefore, people must be ready to live or die, meaning we may live an abundant life in Jesus Christ here on earth. And we can live a better life with him when he calls us home by death or rapture. The point is to be ready and be part of the church which God is calling out right now. We must come to Jesus Christ for salvation in order to be a part of that called out assembly of believers for whom Jesus Christ will come and collect before the onset of the great coming, great tribulation on the earth. So we must ask Jesus Christ to come into our lives, forgive us of our sin nature. If we believe and do such a task, Jesus Christ will forgive us, come into our lives, and the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us until we are called home by death or rapture. No problem. If we die before the rapture, the fact is, we will still be raptured when he comes. Note, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds, and together will meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord, ever be with the Lord. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready today and be a part of this great event that Gabriel explained that's coming in the time of the end, the last days. May God bless you. Lord bless your word. May it go forward with power. We give you thanks for it and touch hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. In case you miss any of the teaching 
of chapters 1 to 8 now. The book of Daniel. Also, all the chapters in Revelation. Friends, you can retrieve them on YouTube under my name, Desmond Michael Coverley. You may also follow this ministry on YouTube, Facebook, my story, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Check it out. And now you find, even on threads, check out the website, corbenje.com. May God bless you. May you and your family have a wonderful day today. In Jesus' name, amen.